In this lesson, we'll take a look at our destruction goals. Now, when I think of destruction, I typically think of large buildings crumbling to the ground. However, in this series of videos, what we're after here is not massive destruction, but subtle destruction. Now, massive destruction can be a lot easier because you've got so much going on, you've got millions of pieces and parts, and it's very difficult to see individual details. Our focus here is to take a vehicle like we have here and subtly add damage to it. Now, I say subtle, but we're going to do some violent uh, animations uh, in order to get the damage that we're after. But overall, we're not exploding the truck into a million pieces. What we're really after here is dents uh, and breakaway parts to all come off of our vehicles. So we'll have pieces and parts that get dented, we'll have some parts that'll fall off, etc. Now the main animation that we're going to do is to take this vehicle and have it flip. We're actually going to have it roll down a fictitious highway. As it rolls, we want to see damage accumulate onto the surface. Now we're going to do this through an end cloth simulation. Now, why simulation? Well, we want to use simulation mainly because it can handle thousands and thousands of vertices and automatically add the deformation that we're looking for. We could keyframe this, but that would be really tedious. And doing a keyframe on it, we might not really get that full physics impact. Okay? Totally possible to do it through keyframe, but again, pretty tedious to do. Hey, now, that doesn't mean that simulation is the end-all, be-all. Once we get a simulation done, we'll often go back and then add keyframes or fine-tune or finesse certain parts of our simulation in order to really get the look that we're after. Our focus here in this video is mainly to tackle the simulation end. Hey, you can always add keyframes uh, to it afterwards. The other thing with the simulation there, as I alluded to, is that simulation can look a lot more realistic, especially when we're dealing with real-world objects in a physics-driven situation, such as a vehicle losing control and flipping down the road. Okay, let's do a little test case here, and we'll just hide our vehicle. And I'm going to create a polygon cube, something really simple here. And we'll give it some subdivisions. Let's just see. Let's try, eh, we'll just stick with 10, something that will simulate pretty fast. And let's just raise this up a bit so gravity can take control. And I will delete the history and freeze my transformations. And then I'll switch over here. We've got end dynamics and we'll go to end mesh. And we'll choose create end cloth. And let's go into the Attribute Editor and go straight to our Nucleus node. Okay, and I am making assumptions here that you're familiar with N-Cloth simulations, that you at least just have a basic understanding. We have an N-Cloth object, and then we have the heart of our simulation, or the engine, which is the Nucleus node. Okay, and now, of course, that Nucleus node is what has our gravity here. But what I'm after is the Use Plane option. I just want to turn that on so that I have something for that cube to fall into. And we'll just hit play, and by default, we can see that our cube just turns into a puddle of vertices. Okay, And that's because it just has our default material on there. And that default material is very close to, uh, we'll say, like a cotton uh, type material or a t-shirt type material. It's a little bit looser than that, but this is the basic understanding there of, of what it what it's doing. Now, in order to get what we're after, more of a metal-like surface, I'm going to go in and just make some changes to that default material. And this is going to be just the basis of all of our materials that we're about to create for deformation. So we're leaving the basics on there, and let's just go on down till we get to our dynamic properties. And I want to take my stretch, compression, and bend resistance, and I'm going to hike these up to 200 for each of them. And we'll hit play again. Okay, notice that it's taking a lot longer to simulate, 
That's mainly happening from the bend resistance. Okay, and now when it hits the ground, it does not collapse into a puddle, okay, and it is retaining its shape and holding its shape very well. And I'm just going to drop that back down. Let's actually just take it to its default of 0.1. And go back and I'll hit play again. Notice how fast that simulation goes now. Okay, it still collapses into a puddle because it's this bend resistance that's really doing the work there for us. Okay, so we're going to keep that at 200. Now at 200, okay, it's retaining its shape really well, but what we want is when it hits the ground, we should see it dent, kind of collapse in on itself a little bit. Okay, and then retain that shape, retain that collapsed shape. So let's go back to frame one again. Okay, and the attribute that's going to allow this to happen is this guy right here, the restitution angle. I'm going to drop this to a value of six. Okay, and this will prevent it from returning back to its original shape. Okay, and that's restitution. Okay, by dropping it down to a value of six, okay, it's keeping it's it's taking a very small angle. So that slight angle that's being changed is where it's locking into. Okay, now you might think, well, you know, why don't we just drop this to zero? Below six, I've noticed that we start to lose integrity of of the the actual simulation, and we start to get some unpredictable results. It it just doesn't seem to work as well. So a value at six and even a little bit higher up into right around an angle of about 30 degrees seems to work really really well for this uh, and I really like six it is the one of the defaults here if you look on your presets for uh, what is it soft metal soft sheet metal uh, you'll see that that's also what Maya has set up uh, for one of its default materials there restitution angle of six and that again works really well so we're gonna stick with that Okay. Now, one other thing that we do want to make sure that we're utilizing here is back up to the top, we've got to make sure that self-collide is turned on. Okay. This is super imperative. Uh, without it, it's not going to be able to retain its shape very well. It'll still collapse. We're still going to see some action there. Okay. And really, I don't even, maybe there's a slight difference from what we saw before, but with self-collide turned on, our surface under a greater impact is going to have more shaping deformation effect. Okay, so again, we, we want that self-collide turned on uh, to really get a very nice dynamic looking simulation. Self-collide, of course, is more expensive. So unfortunately, we will take a hit for that. I'm going to turn that back on. And one thing that we can do and we're going to mess around with here is the self-collide with scale. By default, it's at 1, but I'm going to take it up to a value of 5. And we'll hit play again. And this is going to really slow my simulation down. Okay, but now notice when it hits. Look at the extra detail that we now get than we had before. We get these really nice indentations, kind of sharp angles, really showing off you know, like a real world metal deformation type effect. So by cheating that self collide with scale, we can really get some nice looking metal like deformations. And if we go back, I'm going to turn that self collision thickness on. So you can see here, really how kind of ridiculous uh, the value is by going to five, if we take this back down, there's the base of the surface there, which is the actual collision thickness of 0.012, but we're cranking it up five times. Okay? So it's going way out there. So again, pretty extreme. And we could even think, hey, you know, this seems to work at this level. Let's crank it up even further. So if I were to take that to a value of 10, okay, my simulation really starts to lag. Okay, and as it makes its way, okay, boom, we get a nice impact there. Little bit different of an effect. Okay, so it's something that you'll want to play with depending on the type of metal surface that you're after. 
perhaps a self-collide width scale of 10, this might be a bit more representative of a thicker type metal. Okay? We're dealing with cars and stuff, so we're going to stick with a value of 5, which again I like too because the simulation runs better at a self-collide width scale of 5 as opposed to the 10. So the higher we go there, the more difficult it is for the nucleus engine to simulate. So again, we want to be careful of that. We want to be able to get some rapid feedback here so that we can make changes. Now overall, this is going to be a pretty heavy simulation, but you know, that's the price that we're going to have to pay uh, in order to have something kind of look uh, the way that we're after to get those, those real metal-like deformations. Okay, so that is a look at our destruction goals.